When writing request handlers, it's a good place to start to keep them all in a single file like handlers.js. This way you can reuse them between your setup server and setup worker calls to have a single source of truth for the entire network behavior of your application. But sometimes the number of resources you mock grows too big. If this happens, consider grouping your handlers by the domain that they represent. For example, in my case, I have a few handlers that are responsible for GitHub organization's request and a few handlers for GitHub user's request. So what I would do, I would create a folder called domains and group these handlers into orgs and users GS files respectively. Then I would import each individual domain in my, in my root level handlers.js and compose them together. This will allow me to retain a single source of truth for my network when splitting the handlers. Having structured your handlers this way allows you to import specific subset of handlers on demand. For example, I have a users test where I know that my application is going to make only GitHub users request. So instead of importing the entire handlers of my app, I could import a subset relevant to the users. Sometimes a request handler may grow too big when the mock response it returns is too verbose. If that happens, consider abstracting your response away from your handler. If the nature of your mock response is static, like I have here, you may move them into JSON files. So I would create a directory called fixtures and create one fixture for actions permissions and move this response away from the handler. Then I would import that fixture and use it to respond to this particular request. Sometimes mock responses are dynamic and depend on the data that we send in. Like in this handler for listing repositories for a GitHub user, I'm returning a few repositories here. But what I should do, I should move them away into functions. So I would create a file called entities.js and I would create a function that would mock specific resources. For example, mock repo. I would also allow to customize the values on demand. Then I would call these functions here of writing the data I want. Then I would do the same for my user entity by creating a mock user function. and then calling it in my resolver. With mock functions like this, I can reuse them whenever entities reference each other.
For example, in this repository object, the owner property references a GitHub user. So I can use the mock user function here to get the entire user object as a part of my mock repository.